Broadcasting Live. It's a new podcast. And Maggie's asking me, am I leaving? When am I leaving for Qatar? I'm leaving for Qatar. Just bought my tickets yesterday. I'm leaving for Qatar on the 21st. So we've got a few days. So what is it? The 11th today? I believe it's the 12th today, right? So I've got nine days. So it'll be middle of next week that I leave for Qatar. I actually have to find the correct dates. I'm going to Qatar for seven days, people. And Maggie's got some milk and we're getting a cappuccino. And I think I might just stop there. You haven't got any muffins, Maggie? You have got muffins? Oh, in which case, minis? Mini muffins are in, everyone. Um, you heard it here first. Um, yeah, so I don't know what this podcast is going to be about, really. I'm not even sure that I care right now. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Because I am getting into the holiday mood. So we've got four days. Uh, we've just had a day off for an Arabic holiday which is really good. Watch the golf. The golf was stupendous. I watched Shang Shang Feng go around. That was really cool. Okay, hello. So, uh, Christmas shopping. Yeah, it's already started. I've started to do some Christmas shopping. Quite nice because I've been shopping for books for people who read. Yeah, I'm incredibly impatient, though. Uh, that's my problem. The people in front of me, there's a wrapping section where you can get your books wrapped. To introduce myself, the name's Macbeth during labor. I induce myself, Macbeth. I rap death until my last breath. That's where you find my address. Started with me and Banquo meeting these witches. They said my future would soon hold kingly riches. But Bun sons would reign instead of me. I'm like, yeah, right. What could make my friend into my enemy? But I found out that the counter title was mine, and suddenly thoughts of jealousy. I was thinking, right, I'll just pay for my books and go in line up and get my books wrapped. My goodness, two ladies in front of me had, you know, the kind of uh, shopping baskets that you have when you do your groceries. They had more books than I bought groceries for the whole week. My favorite vegetable. I'm staggering. They were taking ages uh, to wrap, you know, like, they, obviously it was a one-stop thing for them. They had, like... 20 books to wrap and boxes of toys and what have you. So I went into the store, where um, Virgin actually, and I went, have you got a mouse mat? Yeah, 79 dirhams. They wanted to sell me a gaming mouse mat, uh, a, a little excuse, gaming, so it's a little bit better. Uh, is it better or worse? You know, does gaming mean that, you know, they, they say, oh, here's a gaming computer. This, this computer's for gaming. But they don't load it up with games. They just, I guess, it's got superior graphics. Why don't they just say, it's a better computer? You know, be done with it. This computer is a little bit faster. And if you want to use it for games, that might be, you know, there must be a lot of people doing computer games. I haven't got time for it, really, to be honest. But give me a fast computer. Uh, anyway, so the massive queue. I thought, people are just standing there. It's dead time. And there must have been about 30 people all waiting in Virgin to get... And I'm waiting there to buy... I decided to get two mouse mats. I thought, well, I don't think I've got one at home and I need one at work. And then at least I'm buying something for myself as well and not subsidising my workplace. Money makes the world go around. It makes the world go round. But I thought, I'm not queuing. So I just walked down the road to... Um, I can't remember where I went. Now, Jumbo. Went to ask about mouse... A mouse. There's a guy on the till tapping away doesn't look doesn't make eye contact i thought fuck you uh, sorry uli and i went off and found a guy who's roaming the shop floor if i just want them to mind their own business and i just want to browse i got people coming up to me yes sir can i help you sir 
But when I need information, they're head down, tapping away on the till. Jumbo, give me a break. Lighten up on my snake. Hold on, we are broadcasting live. It's a new podcast. I said, have you got a Maggie's mouse asking me, am uh, I He leaving? directed me to a mouse When map. am I 39 dirhams? I thought, right, just by being impatient, I've saved myself um, 40 dirhams, right? So I said, great. And then he said, I need to take a number. He, he walks up to the till with me, hands the same guy who had his head down, busy tapping numbers, and um, he... He, he takes my mouse back. I think, right, OK, it's going to be tap, 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 and then I'll put my, my um, pin number in. About 50 strokes of the keyboard later, count them, 50. I was counting. He was, it was well over 30. Tap, tap, tap. I thought, OK, that's it now. I'll put my pin number in. No. Nope. Tap, tap, tap. A few more. Tap, tap, tap. And he tap, tap, tap. I thought, is he actually dealing with me? I suspect he wasn't. I suspect he'd taken my... Um, mouse mat and he was going to action it when he'd finished what he was already doing um, because that that's the only thing that explains the fact that he was tapping so long and I'm thinking every, every stroke of the keyboard was like an eternity I'm waiting here you know that tap 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 and there's nobody else waiting I don't know what he's doing anyway eventually he um, takes the pin the, the gives me the mouse mat in a bag and I said uh, and he carries on tapping tap 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 and he tap I said I just need the receipt now he goes yes sir and he's tap, tap, tap. Goodness gracious. We live in an automated society. It's 2016. Surely it needs to be facilitated like one tap. You know, the tap which is on his computer, which says facilitate the buying of this purchase. He can scan the barcode. That's fed into the system. And then it's tap. And the barcode's the only variable in that equation because the whole thing is set up customer buying stuff. The customer is buying one item. So it's one barcode. That's one bit of information that needs to be put in. There needs to be one keystroke. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't know about you guys, but I, that just seriously bothers me. You know, why? What was he doing? Uh, like I said, if he's doing something else, not happy with that service, you know. Um, anyway, I got a ah, mouse mouse. I forgot to buy two. Damn it. Drat. I'll have to go back. I'm not going to. I've got a mouse. And, and I've got some nice books. What did I buy? Well, these are gifts, so I'm, I'm, I'm revealing the content of the gift. But um, hey, a Neil deGrasse uh, Tyson uh, science book, I'm going to gift somebody that. And uh, a volume of Sylvia Plath's poetry. If you don't know who she is, she was, well, she's a poet. She's an American poet. She died very young in her 20s. She was famously married to Ted Hughes and she committed suicide in 1963 and Ted Hughes obviously would have been as her husband and uh, you know her equal in poetic talent possibly her superior and she was phenomenal she was a phenomenal talent phenomenally talented uh, poetess um, but Ted Hughes also phenomenally talented and uh, he um, managed her poetic estate, if you like, and he was responsible for putting out and editing anthologies of her poetry. And he didn't go on record talking about the relationship, which led um, feminists to make him a kind of hate figure, which was really unfortunate and very unfair. Uh, but people were saying, you know, no smoke without fire. Uh, another relationship, possibly another wife of Ted Hughes. I think she was called Erica Wevel, but you'll have to check that out for yourself. She committed suicide too, um, which was, again, very unfortunate. So Ted Hughes, um, he produced eventually, not long before his death, a volume of poetry about his relationship with uh, Sylvia Plath, who moved to London as uh, a Fulbright scholar, um, went, actually I think she went to, to Oxford. Um, I'm a bit hazy in my details, I might have to get back, you on, back to you on this, and met Ted Hughes and they had a, a whirlwind romance and became married and then until the tragic suicide, um, I think Ted Hughes might have been guilty of an infidelity or two during that time. But um, he produced, I think, in 1993, uh, not long before his death, he had a late flowering. Uh, he'd already been Poet Laureate since, oh, uh, goodness, who was the Poet Laureate before? I think John Betjeman. 
was Poet Laureate until his death in 1984-1985. And Ted Hughes might have been his successor. Uh, there might have been an intervening figure, I'm not sure. Anyway, Ted Hughes was Poet Laureate up until his death. And um, he went through a sort of fallow period. Uh, but he had this late flowering, you know, this autumn, you know, spring, if you like. Uh, if that's not a contradiction in terms, it is. Uh, and he produced Birthday Letters, which was a sensational volume of poetry, uh, documenting and dealing in poetic terms, obviously, of his relationship with Sylvia Plath. Um, well worth reading. Um, and he also produced a translation of Ovid, um, Metamorphosis, or Tales, Tales from Ovid, I think. So, yeah, worth checking out Ted Hughes. Okay, so I am sitting here in, you might guess by the background noise, this is real background noise, I haven't faked it, it's not a YouTube uh, bit of fakery, this is the genuine deal, the genuine deal, I'm by the ice rink again, and I'm watching the ice rink, and they've got the penguins and the snowmen, and we've got an added attraction of snow being blown up into the air. My fa oh, thank you so much, and my fish and chips have arrived, um, courtesy of Dome. Here we are at the um, Dubai Drums Arabic Desert Camp, and I'm just going to let you listen to the wonderful sound of the capoeira dancers. Would you like to introduce them, Dima? The capoeira dancers. The capoeira dancers. Here they are. In a way, you don't really need to know what they're singing about. You can make a guess what it might be about. What do you think it might be about? What would you like it to be about? Capoeira dancing. <laughs> okay. I'd like it to be about the freedom to explore different options in your life. I'd like it to be about a blade of grass and alluding to the fact that we are all blade of grasses in a meadow. All right. Grasses. grasses. <laughs> We're all grasses in a meadow. <laughs> It's almost midnight. I'll turn into a pumpkin or I'll oh, forget my shoes. So I'm going to go and collect my shoes. And we need to know that for the podcast. <laughs> that I've got some shoes in the DJ corner. I'm going to go and get them, okay? I don't want to mess you guys up. My, my shoes as well. If I can remember what they look like. They look like slippers, kind of. They look like black and they have two straps. One here and one here. Right, okay. Okay. <laughs> 